Okay, so what really matters to American voters like you? Is it Trump tweets? Petty squabbles amongst the politicians? Not so much, as it turns out. Jacob Sobroff is out there exploring the real answer to that question in his new series, and he is here now with the first installment. I'm Megan. so excited about the election. I'm such an election nerd, Megan. we got 62 days to go from today. Voters are going to go to the polls. They're going to decide the balance of power yet again. The Democrats need to flip 23 House seats to take back control. But really, how likely is that? We wanted to figure out what really matters to voters in some of these toss-up districts. The only way to do that is ignore the polls, forget the pundits, right, and it hit the ground. We started in South Florida's 20 26th Congressional District. Take a look. This is the southernmost point in the continental United States. It's also the southernmost point in Florida's 26th Congressional District. And we started our journey through it about 155 miles from here. We first headed to the suburbs of Miami, where many of the Cuban Americans who make up the largest single group in the district live. Maybe that's why Cuban American Congressman Carlos Curbelo asked us to meet him here for a Cuban coffee. This is an immigrant-rich district, and a lot of people aspiring, trying to grow. People uh, want to do better. They want to get ahead. The environment, Everglades, it's just down the street here. This is quite literally ground zero uh, for climate change. That's right. Let's go talk to some folks. So, um, you guys live in the district, Elsa? Oh, yeah. we sure do. You do. I mean, she's my mother, and she <laughs> she came to this country. Do you think the people up in Washington understand what it's like to live here? No. At all. Kids like this today, nowadays kids can't even afford the rent, even with a four-year degree from college. Just half an hour down the road in Homestead, we stopped for lunch at a small restaurant that claims to have the highest Yelp rating in metropolitan Miami. So he's Asian, you're Jamaican. Right. This, is, this place is your baby. What's life like in Homestead? Right now, it's growing and it's getting more expensive. The price of rent went up. The price of bread went up? Yeah, it sure has. When did you notice that? Today. When you were at the supermarket? <laughs> yes, today. After lunch, we kept heading south, and at the end of the first day, we reached Key Largo and met the crew of a dive boat. Do you guys vote here? Yes. You do. How about we'll you guys? Be. I don't vote. You don't? No. No? <laughs> no? You want me to hold that for you, man? I feel like that looks... Let me just... Let me hold that while we talk. Is the reason that you don't vote because you don't believe Washington can help you guys? I don't have any reason to believe that I need to vote right now. No reason at all. No. The next morning, we set out for Isla Mirada, where two professional fishing guides took us to see where they take their clients, the largest seagrass meadow in the world. Well, I wanted to show you an example of an area that has some uh, clean water, beautiful seagrass. Like, you can see that shark in the water right there. See that little nurse shark? Oh, yeah, there's a shark. We headed to where 40,000 acres of seagrass died off in 2015 because of what they say were man-made causes. I'd say that this is off-colored, um, kind of uh, muddy water, not really green, but just muddied up, dirty water. Is your way of life here, as you know it, over, or is this something that can be solved? It's reversible. We have to elect the right people that have the political will to help the environment. We headed south again. 50 miles away to Big Pine Key. Exactly a year ago, this was ground zero for Hurricane Irma in the continental U.S. Here's a house that seems like it might have looked this way the day of the storm or the day after the storm. Doesn't seem like much has changed here since Irma came through. How are you? So you stayed here during the storm? Yeah, me and, me and my hound dog. What was it like? The water got up about about six foot all the way across this whole this whole area. Like as high as where we are right now? Yeah. Could happen again? Of course. So what do you want to hear from your politicians? I got a bad opinion of, of politicians, so. In general? Yeah. All of them? If their mouth is moving, you know the rest of it. We finished our journey as far south as you can go, Key West. We ran into Dee Dee Green and she was heading off to work. You're good. With the congressional election coming up, what do you think the things that people in Key West are going to be voting on? The biggest one will probably be the environment. What about the stuff that we hear about on TV all the time? Trump, Russia investigation, scandals? Those are sometimes distractors. I mean, I think they're important, but I like to stay focused on who's supporting what I'm supporting. So what do you care about most? Um, water quality. And a polluted Key West means what? means less tourism, less, you know, bliss when you're in the water. And what you're looking for is bliss? Yes, always. <laughs> Wow. 
That's so funny to listen to these, you know, Floridians, many of whom are Republicans, say environment, environment, environment. Isn't that interesting? And so the environment is so closely tied, particularly in South Florida, to the economy there. You know, the, the restaurant and homestead where I was eating the snapper to all the way up uh, in Miami-Dade County, uh, the Cuban-American community, everything that happens down in the Everglades and in the Keys uh, affects the economy. They said something like $4 billion in one county alone is tied to the fishing industry there. Mm -hmm. So the Republicans, you know, are on the side of climate change, or at least mm -hmm. nominally so down there. The that last exchange with a woman in the truck was interesting, right? Like, the, the media falls in love with its own stories. And, like, the Trump tweet and the latest on Mueller and the Russia investigation, and they're like, wrong. It's, and it's not wrong. to say that those issues aren't critically important to the health of, the, of our democracy and to the country, and if the president is engaged in scandals and collusion with Russia, you know, that we shouldn't be focused on it. But every day we have to remember what people, like, you guys uh, are thinking about it. Stuff mm -hmm. that affects your daily life, your livelihood, um, how you actually, you know, wake up, get out of bed, uh, and go, uh, you know, into your day. And that's what these people care about. Exactly right. I'll tell you, we um, went out for a vacation in Montana. We went to a rodeo, like a real rodeo, you know? So fun. The cowboys and, like, the whole bit with the chaps. Yep. And the, the folks we talked about there could not care less about the latest tweet controversy at all. They want to make sure that they can provide for their families, that they have good schools, that the government stays out of their business. That's number one out there. They're kind of like New Hampshire's, you know, live free or die. Yep. Um, and so I, it's funny how we sort of in the echo chamber of like New York and L.A. or the media circles That's right. get all wrapped around the axle on certain things and they're like, couldn't care less. Why we and, then we, and then we marvel that the poll numbers don't move. That's exactly right. And uh, look, the House could still flip, but it, it's important we keep going out there and asking this question, what matters to the people out there? Because if it does flip, it's going to flip for reasons like that, not necessarily what the president's doing or tweeting about. I am looking forward to this series. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. And we're, he's going to have another installment tomorrow? Yeah, coming up. On, on today, on yep. the Today Show. All right, we'll be right back. Don't go away.